Welcome guys to today's video lesson. Um, today is going to be very interesting because we have a lot of interesting questions to bring to your notice today. Okay, as we have on the board, we are on the part three of the Jamok physics question 2024. This is part three of the question. So if you know you haven't watched the part one, the part two, please do where to go back to our previous video to get other questions and the answer because these particular questions we are solving are sure to come out in your exam 2024 okay the first question here says that uh, i remember there was a question i posted in our previous video where i gave you a question that uh, what would be the force that must be overcome the assignment question for a body to start moving don't forget there are two types of frictional force we have static friction and we have dynamic friction. The frictional force that must be overcome for a body to start moving is called static friction. While the frictional force that must be overcome for a body to keep moving with a uniform speed is called dynamic friction. So the answer to that question is static friction. And majority of my students got it. That's, that's a kudos to him. Now, let's go into the question for today. A man hears his echo from a nearby he two seconds after he shouted. If the frequency of his voice is 260 hertz and the wavelength is 1.29 meter, how far is the he? Wow, so interesting. Let's work all this question together. A man hears his voice from a nearby he two seconds that is to say that the time is two seconds. After he shouted, if the frequency, what's the frequency? Frequency is 260 hertz, okay? And the wavelength, the wavelength is 1.29 meter. How far is the hill? How far is the hill? How far is the hill? We are looking for what? For distance. So let's put our distance there to be unknown. Now, if you are looking for distance, don't forget that this particular question is from your sound wave and is based on echo. What is echo? Echo is the sound heard after reflection from a plane surface. If a sound travels to a particular distance, and return back to the original position, the sound that is held is referred to as the echo. And the formula to determine the speed of sound in L after reflection is V equals to 2D over T. This is the formula. Your D represents your distance from the source of the sound to the place, the reflecting surface of the sun so this is the formula for the speed of sound in air and don't forget that sound wave is a type of mechanical word wave because it requires material words medium so our general wave equation is that speed is equals to wavelength times frequency yes that's what we have so we can bring up these two together and use it to solve our question by saying that 2d over t is equals to wavelength times your word frequency so what do we have as our distance they did not give us but they gave us time to be what two seconds and is equals to wavelength which is 1.29 frequency is what 260 can these two work what is two yes so your distance will give us 1.29 times 260 Let's quickly do that. <laughs> theory, theory 5.4. Theory, theory 5.4 meter. Yes. So the answer is not A. Our answer is word B. This is echo problem. Remember, echo has a lot of applications. What are the applications of echo? Get your pen and your writing material. Jot this down. The applications of echo is number one. It is used to determine the speed of sound in air. That's number one. Number two, it is used to determine the depth of seabed. Number three, it is used for the exploration of oil and gas. And number four, 
it is used for by submarines it is used by submarines so that's the four applications of echo echo differs entirely from the word reverberation reverberation is the multiple reflection of echo multiple reflection of the original sound is called reverberation if a sound travels and returns back once it's called echo but if it reflects multiple times it is called reverberation a natural phenomenon that explains reverberation is your thunderstorm remember when the thunder strikes you hear the sound many times because of the multiple reflection of the original sound so let's go to question so that one is done let's go to question 15 the instrument that is actually used to measure what atmospheric pressure is called what no it is not manometer manometer is a device that is used to measure our gas pressure okay the answer is what anaerobic barometer barometer measures atmospheric pressure while manometer measures gas pressure wow pressure gauge is just like the pressure in a particular Point, okay, so that has nothing to do with what we are saying. Chisometer, I don't think they're anything called chisometer. So our answer is what B. Let's put take other questions. Question number 16. An object is placed 10 centimeters in front of a concave mirror of focal length 15 centimeter. What is the position and nature of the image that is formed? This is a question that is based on concave mirror. And I guess question 17 is based on convex mirror. So it will be important for us to note the important formulas that are used in solving problems involving curve or spherical mirrors. Please take your book and your pen, jot these important formulas down important formula formula number one remember one over f is one over u plus one over v please take note f is your focal length u is your object distance v is your image distance that's one formula number two v over f is equals to one plus n Formula number three, u over f is equals to one plus one over n. So we have formula number one, formula number two, formula number three, formula number four is that magnification is image over object or it can be height of the image over height of the object. Formula number five, your focal length is arrow over two. Okay, so write these important formulas down because they will be used to solve problems involving curve mirror. Your curve mirror is either a concave mirror or a convex mirror. There is also a special type of concave mirror called the parabolic mirror that is used in car headlamps and in the construction of such light. Now, these formulas are very important. What does F represent? It represents your focal length. What does U represent? It represents your object distance. What does V represent? It represents your image distance, okay? Now, what does M represent? M represents your magnification. What does R represent? It represents radius of curvature. It represents radius of curvature. Okay? Please take note of these important parameters used to solve problems on curve or spherical world mirrors let's quickly go into question number 16 write these formulas down because they will be useful there let's go into question number 16 in question number 16 it has to do with a concave mirror the question says that 
an object is placed 10 centimeters. So our object distance is 10 centimeter in front of a concave mirror of focal length 15 centimeter. What is the nature and position of the image? So we are looking for the image position. Which of the formula are we going to use? Okay, remember the first formula that says 1 over f is equals to 1 over u plus 1 over what? v. So we have 1 over 15 equals to 1 over 10 plus 1 over v. So what do we do? We take the LCM of 1, you, you collect like 10 before you take the LCM and that will give you 1 over V. So what is the LCM of 15 and 10? You can quickly do it this way. Write your 15, write your 10 and 2 can go into 10 to give you 5. 3 can go into 15 to give you 5, 5 and then 5 can go to give you 1, 1. So the LCM is 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 will give us 30. So the LCM of 15 and 10 is 30. So we have 30. 30 divided by 15 is 2 times 1 will give you 2. Minus 30 divided by 10 will give you 3. 3 times 1 will give us what? 1. Equals to, sorry, 3 times 1 will give us 3 equals to 1 over V. So 2 minus 3 will give us minus 1 over 30 equals to 1 over V. So what do we simply do? We cross multiply to get minus V equals to 30. Therefore, V is minus 30 watts centimeter. Now, whenever you have a negative value for your image, it simply means that the image is not real. The image is virtual. It's a virtual image. And most virtual images are found behind the mirror. They are found at the back of the mirror. So, we are going to say that the image is 30 centimeter behind the mirror and it is virtual. It's not real. A real image is an image that is caught on the screen. So, we would have having a positive value if it was a real image. So, let's go into our option. 30 centimeter and virtual. That's the answer. We don't need to stress. This one is wrong. This one is wrong. The image is not real. It's a virtual image. That's why you have a negative value. That's very interesting. So let's quickly do question number 17. Let's create a space for ourselves to do question number 17. Question number 17 says that the magnification of an image of an object placed in front of the convex mirror is 1 over 3. Please, it is interesting for us to know that all the parameters of a convex mirror are negative. The only parameter that is positive is your object distance, which is your U. Okay, so every other parameters for a convex mirror is negative. So if the magnification is 1 over 3, it means that our real magnification equals to minus 1 over 3. Because we know that it is always what negative. If the radius of curvature is 24, radius of curvature because it's negative becomes minus 24 centimeter. Now, whenever you are giving radius of curvature, you can easily get your focal length by dividing your radius of curvature over 2. And that will give us minus 24 over 2 to give us minus 12 centimeter. Take note of that, please. Okay, what is the distance between the object and the image? So it is good for us to find the image first and then we find the object, okay? Or we find the object first before we find the image, then we know what to do. Now, if we have our magnification this and we have this as our focal length, let's first of all calculate the image distance, okay? Remember, there's a formula that says V over L is equals to 1 plus n. So let's quickly do this. V over L is what? Minus 12. Is equals to 1 plus m is what? Minus 1 over 3. So v minus v over 12 is equals to plus minus. We give you 1 minus 1 over 3. This is over 1. So we have minus v over 12 equals to this is 1 and 3. We give us 3. 3 divided by 1 is 3 times 1. 3 minus 3 divided by 3, 1 times 1, 1. So what do we have now? We have that minus v over 12 is equals to 2 over 3. Can we quickly cross multiply? So you have minus 3v is equals to 12 times 2. So minus 3v give us 24. 
divide both sides by minus 3, minus 3. This go what this v is equals to minus 8 centimeter. Remember the image formed by a convex mirror is always what virtual image. If I've gotten this, I can now calculate for my object distance. I can decide to use 1 over L equals to 1 over U plus 1 over V. Wow, so interesting. What is our F? So we have 1. We have 1 over minus 12 is equals to 1 over the U we are looking for plus 1 over minus 8. So what would that give us? Minus 1 over 12 is equals to 1 over U minus 1 over 8. So let's call it like 10. Minus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 8 is equals to 1 over u. Remember, if minus 1 over 8 crosses this, this equal to sign, to change to plus. So what is the LCM of 12 and 8? Let's quickly do it. LCM of 12 and 8. So if 2 go here, you have 6, you have 4. 2 go here, you have 3, you have 2. 2 go here, you have 3, you have 1, then 3 can go. So you have 8 times 3, 24. The LCM of this this will give us 24. 24 divided by 12 will give us what? 2 times minus 1 minus 2 plus 24 divided by 8 will give you 3 times 1 3 equals to 1 over u. Wow, so interesting. So what do we do now? We are going to say that if you have this minus 2 plus 3 is 1 over 24 equals to 1 over u. So that will give us, if you cross multiply, you have u equals 24 centimeter. Wow. Now the question says, what is the distance between the object and the image? Remember, if the object is at the front, the image is found behind the mirror. So the distance between the object to the image is to add both values together. For instance, if I have a convex mirror like this, and here happens to be my object, one year happens to be my image. If this is my object and here is my image. Now, remember we have calculated for the object distance. The object distance, the distance between the object to the mirror. And we got 24 centimeters. Why the image distance, the distance between the image to the mirror. What do you get for our image distance? We got this. We got minus 8. Okay? You don't have to use this minus. Be careful. We use 8. Why would I have to use minus is because this is just to signify that the image is behind the mirror. So from year to year, it's taken as 8 centimeters. So what do we do now? To get the distance from the object to the image, we simply add 24 plus 8, and that will give us 32 centimeters. Wow. So what's the answer to this question? Is it option A? No. Is it option B? No. Is it option C? No. The answer is what? Option D. So we are going to take more questions on the jam mock physics problem. We are going to solve, we are going to answer question 18 and question number 20. And I'm going to leave question 19 for you to take as your assignment. So by the time you are done with this video lesson, please do where to send me your answer to this particular question on the comment section. Okay? So let us sort, answer this and this. I will leave this for you as your assignment. Please do that when you are done with this video lesson. That's question number 19. Take it as your assignment. Question 18 says, when the atmospheric pressure above a liquid is decreased, its boiling point will dash. Its boiling point. What is boiling point? What does the word boiling point mean? Okay? You've heard of words like the melting point of a solid. Okay? They will tell you that melting point is the temperature at which a solid molecules turn into a what a liquid now our boiling point is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure which is our xvp is equals to the external 
at most ferric word pressure. Please take note of that. A substance will boil when the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the external atmospheric pressure. That is when a substance boils. It differs entirely from evaporation. Evaporation is the process by which a liquid turns into a gas below the boiling point of the liquid. The boiling point is the point is the temperature at which your XVP saturated vapor pressure is equal to your external atmospheric pressure. That is when a substance will boil. Now, there are two basic factors that affect the boiling point of a liquid. What are the basic factors that affect or determine the boiling point of a liquid? Number one factor is called your external atmospheric world pressure. It is your pressure itself, your atmospheric pressure. Number two factor is called the impurity. If an impurity is present in a liquid, it will increase the boiling point of that liquid. If the liquid was supposed to boil at 100 degrees Celsius like water, it might take up to 120 degrees Celsius because of the presence of impurity. So impurity in liquid increases the boiling point, while impurity in solid reduces the melting point. Take note of that. So for two factors affecting the boiling point of a liquid, which we say it is the atmospheric pressure and the impurity. So the, the more the impurity, the higher the boiling point. The lesser the impurity, the lower the boiling point. So number two says the external atmospheric pressure. How does pressure affect the boiling point of a liquid? Like I told you, a liquid will only boil when the external atmospheric pressure is equal to the SVP. So the higher the atmospheric pressure, the higher the boiling point. And the lower the atmospheric pressure, the lower the boiling point. So when the atmospheric pressure above a liquid is decreased, the boiling point will also work decrease or what reduce. That's the answer. Okay? So take note of that. The lower the boiling point, the lower the atmospheric pressure, the lower the boiling point. And the higher the atmospheric pressure, the higher the boiling point. Okay? Let's take the last question that we have for today. The last question says that a balloon whose volume, the volume of the balloon is 300 meter cube, is filled with hydrogen. If the density of air in the balloon, the density is 1.3 kilogram per meter cube. Okay? What is the uterus in the balloon? Remember that gravity is 10 meter per second square. What is the formula for uterus? Uterus has two basic formula. Number one, uterus is equals to the weight of an object in air minus the weight of the object in the liquid or the fluid. Or you can write it this way, the weight of an object in air minus the tension in the string to which the object is suspended in the liquid. So this is not one formula for all trust. The other formula for all trust is that all trust is density of the liquid, volume of the object, times acceleration due to gravity. Density of the liquid, please take note, this is the volume of the object emised, emised, then this is your gravity. Take note of this formula. Density of the liquid, volume of the object in mass, then gravity. So if we want to solve this question, we need the density. What is the density? It is what? 1.3 times, what is the volume? 300 times gravity, which is what? 10. So you have 1.3 times 300 times 10. 1.3 times 300 times 10. We have 3,900. So our ultras is 3,900 watt Newton. Ultras is a type of force that exists in a fluid. Okay? We have come to the end of this video lesson part 3. Do well to go back to part 1 and 2 if you have not watched the videos. We have a lot of solutions and detail for you. Okay? You are taking this question number 19 as your assignment question. Do well to send me your answers 
on the comment section and if today is your first time of coming across our video please do where to subscribe to this channel also help us to like our videos for more content thank you very much i'll see you in my next video